Hey everyone, welcome to Laguna Seca Raceway. We are here to try a very, very special motorcycle, the Ducati Superleggera V4. Now, if there is any sort of uh, bad news about today is we were supposed to be at Mugello in Italy to try this bike out. But thanks to COVID, here we are at Laguna Seca. I know not a single soul out there feels sorry for me, but here we are. Um, I mentioned that because it's important because Mugello is a huge racetrack, lots of fast areas, a long straightaway, and Laguna Seca is a very tight and short track, very different personalities to those racetracks, and the Superleggera there is a motorcycle that demands just to be let wide open and ripping. Now, in Italian, Superleggera means super light. So what makes the Superleggera so light? Well, Materials is the big part of it. First of all, you've got carbon fiber. It's everywhere. You've got wheels that are carbon fiber. You've got a frame that's carbon fiber. See? Carbon fiber frame. Super light. You've got a subframe that's carbon fiber. Once again, super light. I can hold it with one finger and hardly break a sweat. Popping it up and down like that. Super light and wheels are carbon fiber, but most of all, you've got a swing arm made from carbon fiber. This is incredibly light for a swing arm. Uh, it's also the single most expensive piece on this motorcycle bar the engine at uh, damn near $20,000. So if you are someone who's one of the lucky 500 people to own one of these, do not damage the swing arm. But apart from the carbon fiber bits, Titanium is used a lot to bring the weight down as well. Darn near every single bolt on that motorcycle is titanium. Uh, connecting rods, titanium. The valves, titanium. Like whatever you can think of to make titanium and reduce weight, that thing's got it. The final product is 335 pounds dry, fully topped off and ready to ride. They wouldn't tell us, but it's somewhere about like 350, 360, and that's incredibly light. Um, other striking things you can see from the Superleggera, it's got wings! The biplane wings, which actually were developed from the Desmo Sedici GP16 MotoGP bike, which actually was the pinnacle of MotoGP aerodynamics before Dorna shut down a lot of the things that the teams were trying. So that bike behind me actually has a better aerodynamic package with those wings than the current 2020 MotoGP uh, GP20, Desmo Sedici. There's a whole lot more to talk about. On the electronics front, you have the same suite that the Panigale V4R has. So you've got the TC, the wheelie control, the uh, ABS, the race modes, all kinds of good stuff. Tweaked a little bit to suit the Superleggera's intent and purpose. The Brembo brake calipers, uh, the pistons themselves are drilled for lightweight, have a special coating so they can slide in and out easier. Those are the quick things about the Superleggera from Ducati. The big thing, the really big thing about this motorcycle is the price, $100,000. Cl clearly, I think so. Definitely the most expensive motorcycle I think I've ever ridden. Uh, so great care was taken not to toss it down the road because I sure as hell can't afford that. But for that price, you also get probably the pinnacle of Ducati engineering for a road legal motorcycle. Yes, that is a road legal motorcycle that has 224 horsepower in stock trim. With the Akrapovich racing exhaust, you get 235 horsepower at the crankshaft, damn near 90 pound feet of torque. It's a wild ride. So what we're here to do at Laguna Seca is to take that bike out on the racetrack to see what it can do. But before we do that, I sound or I feel crazy even saying this, we're gonna warm up with the Panigale V4R. At, at just $40,000, the Panigale V4R is going to be my warm up bike for the day, which is crazy. Uh, so we're gonna go out and do that. Then I'm gonna turn around, ride the Superleggera, and tell you how that's gonna be. And I can't even imagine how crazy today is going to be.
super legera, man. It, it leaves you speechless and breathless. Uh, I guess you expect that from a $100,000 motorcycle, but it is so much motorcycle. It's excessive. Like, it steers as quick as like a 600, maybe even lighter than that. 235 horsepower. And even just on that first session I did, I was in race mode B. So the first two gears, they actually dialed back the, the torque application to help reduce wheelies. And even still, I'm still got my foot hovering over the rear brake to just keep the front end on the ground. It's a wild beast. I've never ridden a superbike before or a modern world superbike, but I'd imagine this is pretty damn close to the things they're riding. And uh, Jake Zemke's here riding around. He's definitely ridden superbikes before, and he's even saying like, "Yeah, man, this bike in production form, the thing, the thing you see here right now, is not too far off from the stuff you know the guys today are riding." And I've got one more session. We're gonna put it in race mode A, give it all the beans, and I'm gonna hang on for your dear life. And uh, I'm sure when I report back then, my eyes will be like super wide and I'll be out of breath and just completely mesmerized by the experience. So uh, I'll bring you along for that ride and hopefully I'll have something coherent to say then. Just rolling down the freaking pit exit here, I can tell this bike already feels lighter. So that was the end of my second and last session. Let me uh, take a quick breath and gather my thoughts. Well, um, I don't even know where to start. That second session after I had a chance to put some food in my stomach and take a few deep breaths and piece things together that second session was so much better than the first. Uh, they put the bike in race mode A, so it, everything the bike's got, it was at my disposal, and that was actually better, in my opinion, than race mode B. The throttle connection was way more linear. Uh, in race mode B, sometimes if I was asking some throttle, it would not react at the speed I wanted it to. With race mode A, it was such a direct connection between my throttle hand and the back tire. It was amazing and then like when I had a chance to really understand how the bike works where my turn-in points should be that was a real game changer for me uh, once you have a chance to wrap your brain around how you need to adjust your riding style the Super Legera is an absolute missile I don't even know where to begin I mean it turns in so fast the power is so brutal, but at the same time, this bike is rideable. I'd imagine at a bigger racetrack that I had, like Road America, for example, or Coda, or the Ridge, or Mugello, it's like those big racetracks give you a chance to really absorb everything happening, whereas a tight track like Laguna Seca here, 
you're really having to stay on top of the bike and stay on top of your game because everything's coming at you so fast. Um, but even then, like, as far as 235 horsepower motorcycles go, the Super Leger is relatively easy to ride. I mean, I say that with a giant grain of salt because 235 horsepower is a lot of responsibility to have on your right wrist. The brakes, obviously, fantastic. It pulls you down from speed at alarming rate. It's so good. Of course, those carbon wheels and the light weight of the motorcycle help too. Less mass and especially less rotating mass. When you stomp on the brakes, obviously you're gonna slow down faster and come down this comes down from ludicrous speed real fast. The quick shifter, of course. Boom, 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 up, auto blip down, bomb, bomb, bomb. Never use the clutch except to leave from the dead stop. Spotless. I mean, what, I don't know what to say about this bike. It's so damn good. It is remarkable. I'm gonna say, not even probably, it is the best production motorcycle I've ever ridden, but it's $100,000. So I guess you kind of expect me to say that. But uh, Ducati, when you let your engineers just go crazy on a project, you guys got some brilliant minds at your disposal. This thing is a gem. Mwah. Bellissima. <laughs>